continue a journey we started a few years ago and, and to continue learning from others and their success stories, their stories of perseverance, strength, and adversity. Uh, we're here to become better leaders in essence, to understand the why of leadership. I think that's the key. Whether it's in business, government, public sector, or private sector. You know, leaders develop through a never-ending process of self-study, education, training, and experience. Uh, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. So as we listen to today's speakers, let's remember a few fundamental questions. Am I learning and improving? Am I setting a higher standard in my work and in my life? Am I taking action on the things that are important to me? Am I bringing people together at this event? Am I making a, the world a happier place? And am I empowering others to be leaders and tell their own story? So with that, are you guys ready to start? Yes. Yeah. All right, fantastic. I'd like to uh, bring to the stage Dr. Eric Schockman, Chair of the Woodbury University Center for Leadership, to say a few words and introduce our first speaker. Many years ago, um, growing up, um, I heard my um, my father and ancestors talk about the Holocaust and how the Jewish community had this great diaspora uh, based on a, an atrocity and how that atrocity really uh, impacted um, the entire uh, flow of community, uh, uh, community zeal. Years later, I wound up in the state uh, legislature as a, as a deputy. And I worked for uh, many distinguished leaders, including Wally Karabian. Um, and Wally Karabian uh, really um, helped me understand the, the role of Armenian Americans and what the genocide um, uh, that has happened. And ultimately, what do we need to do as a state of California to make sure that we commemorate uh, genocide awareness uh, every, every year? So I worked with Wally. We passed a um, resolution in the State Assembly, and, um, and and again, it's sort of my bonding of why I realized we needed to do a conference like this. It is a critical development for uh, the next generation so that the narrative continues, uh, continues on. I have a, a great honor to introduce the president of Woodbury University, Dr. Kalingo. Kalingo um, is the 13th president of uh, Woodbury University, which is 129 years old. Uh, we are um, uh, honored to have Dr. Glendo. He comes from Dominican College up in, uh, in Marin and uh, has been uh, also dean of the uh, School of Business at Long Beach uh, State and uh, really has been an inspiration in turning uh, Woodbury into an activist. Uh, community for an intellectual growth and for uh, community involvement. So without further ado, Dr. Klingo, please. Welcome to Woodbury University. Now, Woodbury is a citizen of this community and always welcomes this opportunity to reach out and contribute to the development of our community. Uh, two years ago, uh, I had the distinct privilege of opening Elevate 2012, and that was literally during my third month in office. And as I recall, at that time, the audience consisted primarily of high school and college students. Okay, so as I was preparing to, uh, for this talk, I made the similar assumption that I'll be dealing with the same audience, but you can rest assured that my message is relevant also to the young at heart. <laughs> Now, I have been asked to speak about academia and higher learning. Now, paraphrasing the words of John Henry Newman, who wrote The Idea of a University in 1852, formation is the ultimate purpose of university education. In the next 15 minutes, I will this the city manager of the city of London, Mr. Scott Ochoa, a quick biography about him, and he'll uh, speak a little bit more about his, his talk. Uh, Scott began his career in local government at the city of Monrovia, and uh, he quickly moved up the ranks, uh, and he became the uh, assistant city 
city manager in 1999. Um, in 2011, when there was a vacancy in the city of Glendale, uh, through a serious vetting process, um, the city selected Scott to be the uh, leader of the city and usher in the new, uh, the new uh, effort and, uh, and excitement. Uh, his management philosophy is uh, predicated on exceptional customer service, uh, value-based management, and precision execution. Scott is very active in the community and serves. Uh, he supports part very several, uh, several organizations, including one of the YMCA, Essentia, as well as uh, Women at Men, and a fantastic opportunity to hear from Scott today at Elevate 2014. Welcome. into a world where 
of weird now designed clinics where the patient actually walks up and is taken straight to the exam. So, you know, a 215 appointment means 215. You'd be surprised at the leadership that is necessary to make something as simple as that occur, but we're working on it. A lot of this is going to be um, going away from the Adam uh, one. Assemblymember Votto, and uh, he's going to address the crowd and uh, pass on some wisdom. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mike Gatto. I represent the 43rd district in the California State Legislature. The district starts in Hollywood uh, and continues through uh, Silver Lake, Los Feliz. Atwater Village, Burbank, Glendale, Locking Island, Lacrosse, through the Angeles National Forest, all the way to the Palmdale border. But I am very, very lucky to be here in Burbank at Woodbury University this afternoon with all of you. I want to thank you all for being here, and hopefully, all of you have learned some really terrific things. The last speaker, is he still here? He was. Um, I thought he was just a very, very terrific speaker, and if he is indicative of the, the different uh, presentations that all of you are getting this afternoon, then you know, all of you are indeed lucky, and uh, we, we owe a debt of gratitude to the organizers for bringing such terrific people here. Uh, I noticed he talked about how hard it is to, to work in a world, medicine, where everybody has tremendously high IQs. Folks, I work in politics. <laughs> I work in government. <laughs> so let's just say I have the opposite problem. <laughs> he, um, and I, I, I love myself in there, so I just, I just want to stress that. Um, I also want to thank um, the Homet Men, um, Autodot Chapter, um, for, for having me here and for the good work that you do. Um, we, uh, we really appreciate all the, the clubs who, who sort of have the what I call these, you know, just really good, pure-hearted, innocent missions, and I think Homeland is definitely one of those organizations. Um, all you do is make sure that the youth um, have a place to go that is safe and that is a good place to be mentored and a good place to to learn lots of wonderful things. Here is Michael Israel. He's got a fantastic story. I'm excited to hear about it. Just looking at his bio, I was motivated just to get out there and, and do some of the things he's working on. Um, he started at a young age of 14 as an entrepreneur and he opened up a cafe in a local movie theater in his hometown. Uh, when he moved with his family to the United States at age 16, that's when his entrepreneurial journey started. Um, he opened up a place called Oasis Bakery and Cafe, and another place called Bliss Cafe and Supper Club in Los Angeles, so on and so on. He's got a lot of accomplishments in, in the world of entertainment and, uh, and restaurants. Um, but Mike is also a big believer in giving back to his community. He's a supporter of many local political organizations, charitable organizations. He's an active board member of the Studio City Improvement Association, supporter of the Hollywood Police Activity League, and he's a fundraiser for the Hollywood Community Housing Corporation, a charity that builds and supports housing for underprivileged people in Los Angeles. He's earned many business accolades. Uh, he's been named Armenian Businessman of the Year in 2010. He's been featured on the cover of Yerevan magazine, and he's one of uh, Los Angeles Business Journal's top 20 in their 20s. So with further ado, I'd like to introduce Michael Desire. Thank you.
better and actually stop doing what they do or what they love. I uh, lost the property. I lost the property to the landlord and subscribing to litigations and all my investment and everything was in this uh, project. But I, uh, I didn't give up. And uh, as I was in courts without a venue, without a business, uh, I you know, saw that the market uh, has been changing in Los Angeles and uh, I'm using what I have done to be able to raise some capital to be able to start a new lesson. And we can. Alright, so Catherine has uh, been an integral part of the success of Pixar. Uh, she was involved with the uh, 2012 Golden Globe and Academy Award winning Brave. And she's a former Olympic member. Really nice. Oh, really? Uh, and she holds a master's degree from uh, UCLA. And uh, she's very active in the Oakland Bay Area um, community with the profession. We're delighted to have her here today. And turn it over to you. That's why I just 
start. Uh, even I don't have a high, high school. Uh, uh, I start my business when I am 15. Then my father passed away in 1964. Uh, uh, just uh, I, then last month I'm in the hospital. Uh, but I have a chance that I have uh, a problem with my knee. Lots of problems. Then I see. Uh, a newspaper and it's about our mothers most truly. And there is a word we have. Bartasid, Bartasu. Elevate yourself and elevate others with you. So for those of you who are wondering why we use the word elevate for this, this is the reason why we use the word elevate for our leadership presentation. And uh, I think Mr. Lombarda was, you know, some of your football fans said it best, leaders are made, they're not born. And they are made by hard effort, which is the price which all of us must pay to achieve a goal, which is worthwhile. And I want to tell you, through all the hard work that we've done, everyone here, give yourself a round of applause. And our many Americans who come Saturday morning, 9 o'clock, to a leadership award, they then that's hard work. Okay, let's start. I was shocked to see so many faces 9 o'clock. But also you have a lot of people to elevate to the next level. And this is what we call elevating your game. We're going to continue doing what we're doing in a series of what we're going to be calling Elevate Talks. Uh, we'll have more concentrated workshops on specific topics. And, you know, I want to take this opportunity to also have, uh, thank Sabato, the mind behind this LA project as well. So Sabato is a round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple of thank yous and then we're going to go ahead and have lunch. Um, I want to thank our sponsors, Green Fund and Glendale Advantage Medical Center. Um, of course, this was a team effort. So I want to recognize some of our members from the Humanism and RRF Lando chapter. Uh, this is a committee that put this event together. Um, Armand Gorgorian, of course. Rosa <laughs> Valencian. Armin Martin. Rosa <laughs> Panacian, where are you going? There you are. Lieutenant Dona Abramian, and the RRF Executive Board and Chairman Tommy Abramian. Thank you so much. I also want to thank the Woodbury University Center for Leadership and Dr. Schalkman for your leadership. And uh, Kelly Nicoli from Woodbury University. I also want to recognize the Woodbury University Relations Department for helping us. We have Michael Seymour with us from the University of Virginia. I want to thank Lucina Carabian from World Networks. Thank you, Lucina, for your work. Great company. Linda. Linda Police Department. And the LA County Sheriff's Department. Uh, but again, this event will not happen without volunteers. And I want to thank some of our volunteers. These are the, I'm not going to call them future, current leaders who are, you know, volunteering to make our community a better place for everyone. So I'm going to recognize some of these young individuals. Um, Moses Karagnesian. Hovit Zovikian. Gerald um, Terzantian, this was a young people for Burbank ASA. We were here at 8.30 in the morning, trying to get a 17 year old to show up at 8.30 to a university. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Paulina Adekani, my cousin, also from Burbank High School. From Burbank High School, we're going to do the last drawing, Paulina Tamar. Also, some of you have seen all the certificates. I want to thank some of our elected officials who have provided us with certificates. Uh, Congress Adam Schiff, who couldn't be here today. Um, Speaker of the Assembly, John Perez. California State Assembly Member Audrey Nazarian. 
State Senator Karen Liu, California State Controller John Chong, Mayor, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and Council Members Paul Gregorian and Felipe Fuentes. So